I'm Chef Mark McCrow, and this is My Home Kitchen. We're back at home base today, my dudes, and local pork is on the menu. It's all about the ingredients of this one. So I dropped in on Water West Kitchen of Meats to get the most amazing bone-in chops. And the Rolls Royce and pork chops calls for the Rolls Royce of sides. We're doing a cheesy corn polenta, sauteed apples and rosemary. We got the best local honey. We're gonna do crispy shards, a speck ham, just to bring it to new levels. So stick with me and your wildest pork dreams are about to come true. So let's dive on into it, guys. We're gonna start with our speck ham. Just like a prosciutto, but the only difference is the stuff's smoked. So we're gonna peel back a few nice slices. We're gonna get about four slices. Our pan's on a medium heat, so we're just gonna give it a little tiny lug of olive oil just to help it along. All right, so pan's nice and hot, so we're just gonna go on, put four slices right on in there. Get these nice and crispy on one side, give them a flip for about another minute on the other side, get them on a piece of paper towel, pat them dry, and we're gonna set those aside for plating later. So let's have a look here. We got a nice little golden brown on one side. We're gonna flip it over. Same thing the other side, get it nice and crispy. All right, so our ham is nice and crispy. We're just gonna take it out, pat it dry, get some of that oil off it. It's gonna turn nice and crispy. We're gonna crumble tiny little shards of it over our finished dish. It's gonna be awesome. So let's set this aside. So now, on to the star, those beautiful local pork chops we picked up at Water West. Just gonna take some good kosher salt, give these guys a good seasoning on both sides. So a little crack of fresh black pepper. That's one side, and you want to season things on two sides, guys. You don't want one side to be bland and one side to be flavorful. So we're going to flip them over, do the same thing. And you can just mop up that seasoning, get it in. We got the rind attached to this pork, so it's going to get nice and crispy. So let's talk about this pan. We got all that beautiful olive oil and speck ham flavor right on in there. So we don't want to waste it. We're going to use the Sierra chops. Hot pan, just going to go in with two chops. Nice big pan. We got the bone on, so we got a really big pan. One chop in, and two. You want to hear that sizzle, guys. That means you're going to get a good caramelization, a nice flavor, lots of color. All right, so we had a nice little hot sear on these pork chops for about two, three minutes per side. If you check it out, we got a nice little golden brown on there. So we're going to flip them over, same thing to the other side. So we're going to caramelize the bottom. I'm going to pop them up on the sides after that to sear that fat. But while they're in the pan, let's add some more flavor. Let's get a few cloves of garlic, and I'm literally just gonna put the back of my knife, give them a good crunch. I just want them to permeate the pan, get some nice flavor. We're gonna get a couple of sprigs of fresh thyme and just sort of nestle them in, in and around the pork. It can only add flavor. As soon as the thyme hits the pan, it crackles and pops, you can smell it. I can already smell the garlic, so it's definitely doing good stuff to our chops. So yeah, guys, my pan's at about medium heat, so we're going about two to three minutes on each side. You don't want to flip it when you get a nice golden crust. These chops got that lovely little fat cap on the bottom. I want to crisp that up too, so I'm literally just gonna try to stand them up next to each other and just give them a couple of minutes, rolling around in that hot fat. Get in there, show it a bit of love. And what says love? More than butter. So I'm gonna go in with a nice big tablespoon. Right on in. Get all that garlic and rosemary and pork fat right down to the bottom of the pan and just hit these guys with a little bit of a baste. Pork chops are looking great, guys. We got them seared, we got them basted, we got them loved with some butter, some garlic, some thyme. I'm gonna take them out on a pie pan perch those cloves of garlic, thyme, and that little bit of a butter bath fizzled right over. And these bad boys are destined for the oven. So I got my oven set at 350 degrees. They're about halfway cooked now, so to take them right to about 165 degrees, which is nice and pink in the center, I probably want to pop them in for about five, six minutes. We'll keep an eye on them, just make sure they're not gonna overcook. So in they go.
We're giving this pan a bit of a workout today, but it's all in the name of flavor. We're going back in one more time with some sauteed apples, some fresh rosemary, a little bit of butter, some apple cider vinegar to make the perfect sauce to top these chops. So I'm going to start by slicing up a couple of green apples. Just literally going to cut them away from the core, so four segments. I take one each time, and you just want to go make some nice slices, do the choppy choppy. All right, we got our apples finished up. Back to the pan with a nice knob of butter, freshen things up. We're going to let that melt and we're gonna go right in with the apples. So this is it guys, this is gonna be our sauce. We're gonna season our apples with a little bit of kosher salt, a little crack of fresh pepper. We're gonna get some fresh rosemary and just strip this right off the stem and get in there and give it a good chop. So we got butter, apples, that beautiful fresh rosemary right on in. Next up, we're gonna get some sweetness in there. So we're going with a really good local honey. And we're gonna pour about two tablespoons right on in. Beautiful, drizzle that around, get it in there. All that pork goodness is starting to come up, meld with the apples, the rosemary's doing its job. Next thing, some of my favorite mustard. We got a nice little horseradish mustard here. A Little bit of a spice. Let's go in with about a tablespoon of mustard. So we got the sweetness of the honey. Now we want to counterbalance that with a little bit of acidity. So we're going in with some good apple cider vinegar to deglaze the pan. About four tablespoons. I'm going to hit it with a little touch of chicken broth just to bring the sauce together. And to make it pop, we're going to go in with a little bit of fresh lemon zest just to brighten up the dish. Get that on in there. Beauty, beauty. So I'm going to shut that off and we're going to move on to our cheesy corn polenta. Get back to that sauce later to top our chops. So to start my cheesy corn polenta, we're gonna start with one part cornmeal to five parts chicken broth. So I got a, a one cup measure here, going into a hot pot with five cups. We're gonna bring that broth to a boil with a little sprig of fresh thyme and a little clove of garlic and right on in. So in the pot, we got our chicken stock, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of garlic for aromatics. We're gonna go with a little pinch of salt, a little crack of fresh pepper. We're gonna measure out a cup of cornmeal. Cup of cornmeal right on in. And now we start the whisk. You wanna bring this to a boil, bring it low to a simmer, and just sort of constantly keep an eye on it, whisking it. If it gets a little too thick, I'll switch to a wooden spoon. In the end, we're gonna get a nice little creamy porridge and we're gonna finish it with some pecorino cheese. Perfect little base for our pork chop. Keep it moving for about 15 minutes because those corn granules need to soak up that liquid and become nice and tender. So it's been about five minutes for our pork chop, so I'm gonna go ahead and haul that out of the oven. And we're just gonna lay it in the back to rest for about another 10 minutes. Oh, look at that, wow. So I'm gonna set this back, let it rest for about five, 10 minutes. Because if you cut into a pork chop, it's not rested, all the juices are just gonna bleed right out. If you let it rest, they'll suck right back in and have a nice juicy pork chop. So we've been whisking this thing till our heart's content, so now it's off the heat. I'm gonna go in with a big knob of butter and some Pecorino Romano. This stuff is a hard Italian cheese, very similar to Parmesan, maybe a little bit nuttier, and we're just gonna pop that in. You can easily substitute the Parmesan. You got a nice big grating of this. The whisk that butter, that pecorino right on in. We got our garlic and thyme infused polenta, all that pecorino, all that butter. Off the heat and we can set it aside. So we're gonna take our rested pork chops and if you'll notice we got all these beautiful resting juices, some of that butter, all that garlic and thyme flavor. Waste not, want not, we're gonna dump it right into our sauce and just really amp the flavor up. All right, it all comes down to this. We got our nice big platter. So we're gonna start with a nice bed of that creamy, cheesy polenta. Going back to our chops. Oh man, look at these. One chop, nice and rested. And we're going in with those beautiful sauteed apples. We got the rosemary, butter, resting juices, beautiful mustard right on top of each. 
as promised, crispy shards of speck ham. So, I'm just gonna rip a couple of these up, pepper them around the plate. I think that's it, guys. That looks like a masterpiece to me. And I'm going in. All right, so I'm just gonna cut right into the chop. I'm gonna create the ultimate bite, get a little bit of that speck ham, the apples. That's it, top 10 of all time. And the reason why, it's because we got that local pork from Water West Meats. We gave it some love at home. We got all the different contrast of flavors, the sweet, the sour, the salty, the creamy. So that's it, our work here is done. But it's not really work when the ingredients are as good as this. So until next time, I'll see you again on My Home Kitchen.